So friends, uh, we are into our four, no, 11th module and this is uh, on prognostics and health management and uh, today we will be discussing the role of uh, artificial neural network or I would say even machine learning in uh, remaining useful life estimation, the core topic that we, we have been uh, pointing to. Um, okay, so uh, I am Professor Prabhakar V. Varde and uh, this is a course sponsored by uh, National Program on Technology Enhancement Learning and uh, we will be uh, discussing RUL estimation today. So let us uh, start a uh, little bit of uh, so background uh, in the sense that uh, if some, somebody is hearing only this lecture in isolation, so there should be a continuity. So first of all, uh, the story started with the artificial neural network uh, somewhere in 1990s and uh, or even before that actually. But in 1990, there was a sort, some sort of debate that, okay, whether ANN is a correct strategy and people started sort of looking at it very critically. Uh, but then there also uh, one sense was prevailing problem is not with the ANN algorithm per se, it was the data, what you like, like junk in junk out, what you feed to the ANN, the same thing or, uh, around that things will come out. So this was a feeling and I think um, it is over, as, a, as the time is passing, um, the kind of efforts we are putting in uh, into data uh, through machine learning and deep learning, probably that, that assertion uh, in 90s that came correct. And uh, now uh, ANN has become, or even artificial intelligence itself as on today is one of the choicest uh, uh, method uh, to improve whether it is production or any walk of life. Now there is no convincing required. So we are in a very opportunistic time that we are discussing about artificial neural network. And there also uh, we, are, we are discussing deep learning as part of this, or uh, ANN as part of the deep learning. Okay, um, now here uh, some some um, some sort of a discussion should be there uh, like background we have already given, uh, but why artificial uh, intelligence and then machine learning came into machine learning came into existence or it prevailed because lot of statistical support was there uh, for uh, for uh, ANN uh, in terms of various algorithm and deep learning became a reality because uh, uh, data analysis was found to be uh, like data analytics was, was found to be one of the uh, major area uh, that, would, that would give a uh, break to the uh, AI approach and all and probably uh, that is where now we have strategies uh, wherein uh, we, can, uh, we can analyze uh, the you can say uh, a complex data set in terms of uh, quantity, in terms of uh, interaction, dependability and all that. So that's how the machine uh, deep learning has come into uh, and now uh, we are seeing and there are many approaches where uh, regression is playing almost uh, uh, optimization is playing a uh, role and then uh, uh, you know decision tree and this kind of toolbox uh, they are becoming handy. Uh, so let us see what is there uh, as I said little bit of fundamentals I am giving in this lecture because this lecture I wanted to make it self-standing sort of thing. So uh, inspiration from human brain and the, you can see here neurons uh, spread over or at the depth and at the uh, level of uh, uh, various cortex to any, any level you can say in the brain and they are connected and this connection uh, was responsible as we mentioned earlier for all our uh, cognitive task okay and then cognitive task means decision making uh, rational behavior analysis all those things and uh, uh, certain at certain level or some you know uh, our senses uh, this is optical senses you know were analyzed here then there were so frontal area was basically responsible for uh, uh, for the intelligent task actually and then processing of uh, uh, signals in this area 
then uh, auditory uh, signals processing and uh, uh, somato uh, sensory signals over here and uh, of course vision was analyzed at the back end uh, this is over so, and then uh, so brain was doing what the point is the different types of uh, the areas of the brain were doing different uh, different functions and the response uh, the fundamental agency which was responsible for all this function was uh, neurons uh, new, uh, uh, neuron structure was like this uh, it is a new uh, it is a nucleus uh, where the the where the core signal processing would happen and then uh, dendrites and then we have cell body like all this yellow motion shows and then axons and then is synapse synapse means it will get connected to the next neurons and that's how a inter an interplay of signal uh, communication will occur and uh, so uh, reflection of this neuron uh, mathematically it was conceived like this that you know input signal will be coming through uh, synapse over here and here through the uh, precursor uh, uh, parameters and they will be uh, a summation sign has been sh shown because there is the activation function performed uh, uh, activation is performed here and then all those signals along with it, it's a weight um, and then the bias also is taken into account and then output is generated so we can see a uh, sort of elementary uh, neural network over here so here again the yellow is uh, neuron and then uh, three inputs uh, over here and the input layer then the uh, hidden layer and then uh, this is output layer so the number of neurons uh, uh, 3 2 and 1 sorry this is uh, just um, opposite it is 3 here and 1 here that is output is going through one neuron so having uh, got this uh, background on uh, fundamental of ann uh, let us see the how actually processing or at mathematical level what happens actually so output is uh, composed of one uh, constant and then summation of all the x as we saw three inputs were there uh, and with say, some uh, function over here and again a constant c0 c1 and uh, finally it comes to that generating an output so um, we have been discussing the sigmoid function over here so at x uh, kth layer that means there are three layers so uh, kth layer either input layer output layer uh, the, this function is mapped in the neuron layer and uh, uh, 1 plus exponential net j and net j is generated how over here you can see here net j is nothing but summation of wij that means the connection no, uh, node uh, and its weight they are multiplied so ij means previous layer i next layer j so that means uh, the, this is the kth layer so we can say uh, from uh, from uh, from neuron 1 to the uh, next layer again neuron 1 ij uh, so and in the k k plus 1 layer so this is the uh, mapping that we can read and plus uh, a bias function uh, this bias node is in in, in uh, ann the first node is always read as a bias node bias node means uh, while while uh, uh, training is going on the weight should uh, should should remain uh, have some reference value so this reference value is uh, over here because all the input layers are active uh, activated by random uh, random weights uh, they are around zero so uh, actually uh, it's tricky to uh, you know how to choose uh, or how to randomly uh, have this uh, uh, input uh, or the weight uh, with the function uh, so uh, so in nutshell we have net j and that net j comes here uh, mapped by the sigmoid function you can see here so summation of this and then uh, sigmoid function is applied uh, over here and then we have the output so this strategy first we go from input layer to output layer but in one iteration you don't find the solution but yeah error is reduced because training is going on there are weights around, around that so some delta error will be developed here uh, sometimes it is called mean uh, root square square root error or sometimes it is a mean absolute error whatever the target so we are very uh, far away from the target in the first iteration so again it goes and again view this iteration from from uh, uh, 
forth back and forth it goes on and this strategy is called uh, back propagation and uh, feed forward feed forward means you start feeding from here and back propagation it propagates back or here and then this correction um, if my experience is right the modern algorithm they, they give very 100 to 200 iteration for this uh, um, uh, feed forward back propagation strategy but uh, yeah so so it depends on the complexity the size of the network and all that now here itself i'll point out that this hidden layer is very important for a, quite some time the uh, the why the hidden layer and what is its role and all but then now there is an understanding uh, now you will find in modern ann there are more number of hidden layers because some features can be extracted from here which gives us a deeper understanding of what is going on at this level and whether it can be uh, whether we are uh, able to extract some feature of analysis which is beneficial to uh, come around the output that is accuracy of the results so those kind of things and uh, deep uh, learning approach they have given us this opportunity uh, again when nn is applied uh, to uh, at the plant level so we have a strategy at plant level the signals are there available uh, in the control room of the plant so uh, uh, during the operation phase what the machine learning algorithm can do is they can be trained in um, you know, set of uh, set of transients which have been uh, which have been part of safety analysis or risk analysis and then uh, so that means uh, whatever postulated scenarios were uh, uh, were uh, analyzed in the uh, safety report which uh, the confidence should be very high that against that the uh, plant has been demonstrated to be safe and if you create the transient uh, where in, transient means um, the plant suddenly enters into a uh, shutdown state or a different state. So if it is a slow transition uh, 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 then it is called deviation. So plant is deviating from normal operation. But when it is a uh, very fast thing then it is called transient. Within very short time plant comes to changes from one state to another state normally in shutdown state. But what is the reason those things have to be analyzed. So at plant level it is a transient analysis which form so that means if our definition of prognostic is without much consequences that means this plays a very important role we have identified the transient and we have taken decision and brought the plant back within a very short time to the normal shutdown state okay then at ssc level uh, it is a different scenario the sscs they degrade very slowly Okay. So, they are monitoring, especially they are passive, passive system when you talk about that. So, monitoring this signal for degradation. So, this is a second level of uh, machine learning algorithm or prognostic algorithm for monitoring and uh, trying to understand what is the level of degradation or readiness uh, if, if you have to talk in positive sense. And then the operational phase. Operational phase we need input for maintenance. Uh, and for uh, for having a for uh, for requiring at present in maintenance we use preventive approach or condition based approach but then if we have a better tool uh, which tells us that the component is not degraded and it doesn't require any service so far because there is there is no symptom in terms of uh, vibration noise or temperature then if you have a, a phm strategy it and uh, it is weighted by the uh, experts and so if you supply this particular thing to plant probably lot of uh, maintenance activities uh, otherwise preventive basis means uh, once the period has come you have to do the maintenance okay next is uh, the in service uh, programs also require uh, annual things and all that so even that program can be filtered out it is called risk based isi program that, that means psa or pr probabilistic risk assessment has done a job to reduce the frequency of in service inspection uh, which happens uh, you know for each component the uh, the turn will come uh, maybe uh, at least uh, to one year two year three years and all that but even that can be re reduced if we have some sensor uh, where it is put at a strategic location so that we get the representative uh, uh, you know signal uh, for the system or structure and then we can reduce that effort of uh, in service inspection okay and then uh, having said about uh, there are some dynamic equipment dynamic equipment means pump uh, 
uh, then walls where they have open closed signal and all so if we can we can monitor on that also so it is a like uh, individual component uh, monitoring that uh, that we can bring in and at the at the at the bottom line is here uh, whether we do so it is basically um, if you have to increase the accuracy and uh, then r and d on uh, rul uh, remaining useful life is the uh, is the uh, way forward you know so uh, this is how we came down from system level to uh, structure level uh, passive structure level to uh, pl plant level and component level and that's how we saw the spectrum uh, that that means the phm approach uh, uh, for system level uh, is one of the uh, attractive because we thought before uh, before we put up an example we should have an idea uh, okay how strategically we can put the this uh, this thing uh, samples over here so now if you, if i have to say what um, like uh, physics of failure approach we have discussed enough and now we feel ki if you have to uh, like timing it is the data driven approach uh, which is very friendly also you have to just put a sensor so before that and after uh, before phm and after phm the difference in the plant was some additional sensors were put because some sensors were already there like for pumps pumps we had bearing uh, oil level monitoring uh, you know vibration signature signatures were available then uh, temperature uh, the characteristics were available and in some way we had this information in the uh, hardware module now uh, taking the input from hardware module and putting this algorithm and trying to extract the features such that we can do uh, uh, you know maintenance requirement i would say straight forward whether you need to shut down this equipment or uh, you know or uh, any planning can be done on that so uh, the the uh, procedure is like this uh, first is functional consideration okay uh, why we should go for uh, this kind of uh, strategies uh, then once that decision has been made then data equation that means sensing the signal eliciting the and then choosing the proper uh, sensors okay so uh, these things and data transmission storage capability also we have to build because continuously data will be com coming in and uh, how to take care of the data part and all that and then uh, data cleaning uh, cleansing data normalization noise reduction these are the uh, processes which form part of pre processing okay and then we have uh, feature extraction in feature extraction absolute mean standard relate so like if i as i said vibration monitoring then uh, mean value uh, standard deviation how much and then error function and so this uh, forms part of the feature extraction and then sensitivity analysis because each data will not be sensitive to our uh, so we have to see what is so sensitive so that we are getting efficient signal it's a dimensionality that is also very important and computational requirement what are the things that are required then basically it is healthy that means uh, remaining useful life and all that estimation um, baseline creation real time health estimation so this this criteria and protocols that we have to develop and which can utilize past experience and multivariate analysis finally diagnosis that is anomaly detection uh, real time health um, diagnosis is basically um, based on the data uh, we apply our uh, knowledge and probably uh, using algorithm even even a rule based approach can uh, can work for this anomaly detection and uh, so and then parameters contribution and finally prognosis that is remaining useful life fault prediction and then uh, future trending and all we uh, do and then it is it is uh, it is compared with the uh, target value that is uh, failure rate and then we uh, we can uh, declare uh, how far uh, it is from the uh, failure cri failure criteria failure threshold and then for that we have this uh, uh, when when we get into the data analysis and this kind of job we have to really uh, differentiate the data and there are uh, this is called principal component analysis so one one component is pc2 uh, uh, across the breadth of the uh, data and along the length of the data pc1 and uh, healthy case and faulty case so we are able to put uh, by putting pc2 these are unhealthy case and these are healthy case and if we get from plant even if without analyzing in data and putting it in this uh, um, uh, principal component analysis it is a huge job that has been done that means we are able to in one shot or one go uh, on the algorithm we could create two se sectors healthy and sick and that is what the whole m is about 
so uh, so this kind of a broad procedure uh, which is there uh, and when we saw, saw that feature extraction in feature extraction what we do basically is the we see the uh, if it is a vibrates uh, vibration sign signature then we we saw if we have the, uh, had the vibration signature then we saw peak uh, uh, what is the uh, vibration peak which is called ma maximum uh, and there is called uh, cortosis value uh, which is extensively used in vibration analysis uh, and then this is uh, model is given 1 upon n uh, sigma it is like our uh, in normal distribution uh, we have z value so this represents a z value and uh, raised to power 4 so that gi that gives us the cortosis value it is basically magnifying the z value uh, and uh, and then finally a normalization with 1 up 1 by n and of course we have this and then the mean mean we all know that um, uh, addition of all the uh, spectrum uh, the value which we have crest factor will get maximum uh and then uh, x rms divided by x rms so this is a mod that we have put minus and all uh, have been eliminated so mod x here root mean square value uh, uh, we have square of the things and then you take the root so again you get x and then averaging and this is this is called impulse factor and uh, maximum of mod and then one by uh, this particular uh, model over here and this will give us impulse factor and then skewness uh, 1 upon n uh, um, again the z value again it's a cube and i to 1 to n of summation and uh, snap factor and these are very well known models and methods and uh, they are used uh, as such by an specialist uh, to to take decision on various uh, parameter especially vibration uh, what is the level of, of vibration how far we can operate a bearing or in turn the pump so so and they are plugged into our uh, algorithm now uh, we had those inputs certain inputs i'll not going to uh, i'll not going to details of uh, because you know everything cannot be uh, uh, discussed in open domain so so you have built a network with the 10 nodes input uh, layer nodes and then we had this uh, number of uh, hidden layers 15 um, these were optimized so here we are discussing the first trial that is one uh, one hidden layer only uh, so number of hidden layers was one number of neurons in the uh, output layer was one that's what we have discussed over here learning rate and uh, momentum rate that we have worked out and our target function was that rms error uh, should be 001 if we reached that means our learning is over and uh, uh, target value at the node level it was 0.001 so at two level iteration has to be carried out one is at the node level and then at the at the uh, layer level so uh, so we have these two figures 0.001 and 10 into 1 into 10 minus 4 so maximum number of iteration okay uh, 1000 and all the seven and it takes training for 3 hours or whatever Uh, now it is we have uh, advanced computers and computational system our algorithms are so it might take less time uh, so sorry 3 minutes actually so uh, th this is a new data but in old computers it used to take more time and that's what the effect was and then what we talked about the rms error the rms rms error is computed at the uh, node level uh, and then finally at the uh, uh, sorry at the layer level and then node level and then uh, we have Uh, this particular model for ERMS. Uh, P is number of patterns in the input. L is the number of layers. K. So this is the network which was uh, which was designed, and then uh, the architecture of the complete system was online data. Actually, all these things you should do you do on a simulator because in plant. Uh, so simulator reflects the plant specific data also because uh, they are part of simulator. at the same time it allows you to do experiment on let's say outlier or missing information so those kind of thing can be done only on simulator not cannot it cannot be done on the plant so data equation then uh, the first phase is uh, the pre processing so pre processing happens uh, and then data equation or uh, mod data module uh, and then input vector so this forms an input vector now we are putting into our neural network and then we have output we have uh, done like this actually there was a single node um actually it is a iteration and all the values whether input no, uh, output node number of hidden layers they come by uh, parametric studies uh, to be uh, to be very correct so 
uh, you can have one node also, you can have many nodes. In what vector, whether you want these values in vector form or, a, or in a stream form, it depends on all. And then finally it is a, so reactor, uh, reactor is whatever um, status are there. Uh, this was done for transient and uh, same algorithm was applied for even RUL estimation also and training algorithm over here. And then finally uh, a sort of a, um, a closed loop training occurs and once they face the real time scenario, they simply predict because they had learned patterns over here. It is a straight mapping on the learned pattern and then you produce the output. So this is how the complete architecture. Here I have shown this thing for uh, reactor ident identification vector because this was the original uh, ANN and later on the same ANN was used for uh, even RUL estimation also. So the result of uh, RUL estimation are like this. Uh, we had a, a lot of data on uh, bearing uh, health degradation and all that. So these data the, the were plotted and then the, this is subject data that we are the, uh, monitoring we are mon and the predict prediction comes based on the experience. These data they are uh, playing the role of experience over here or trends over here and at every stage it predicts the remaining useful life. Uh, and then uh, it is a, this is threshold. So uh, when, once we are approaching a threshold, it says give a warning, gives a warning and then so, so the prognostic algorithm will estimate from right from here till here the, the two things. One is the point value uh, for the degradation and then the uncertainty. So uh, we get the result with a upper uh, lower bound and upper bound and this is the beauty of this uh, approach uh, in predicting because uh, it is sensible to tell any data or communicate any data whether it is science or engineering domain uh, with a uh, probabilistic feature or uncertainty. If I say my uh, life will be around this point, so you can see this may not turn out to be correct because there are so many sources of uncertainties are there. There are so many life cycle loads which will move the, uh, the, uh, this curve either this way or that way the mean value may, might change from year to year. So life cycle load consideration should be there. So from the data many bearings would have seen a different life cycle loads, uh, stresses and uh, bearing qualities and all that and that, that gets captured in this stream and we, get, we are able to uh, predict. Uh, predict. Uh, so uh, this also is a one way to see how vendor, vendors normally give very conservative uh, uh, mean time to failure estimate or mean time between failure but for them maintenance aspect is not there so mean time to failure uh, estimate they give. So we can in uh, one analysis uh, in uh, 5 years or 4 years we can uh, give a, or have our own uh, factors to assess the uh, and we don't we won't depend on the uh, vendors data what we have. Uh, and then finally we see uh, how over a period of time we are approaching very close and our this upper bound and lower bound they are becoming uh, 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 very closer you know they are they are they are coming closer and the factor is not more than 1.2 1.3 uh, if you compare with the mean on both the sides you know so this is how it is uh, RUL prediction and then uh, okay so what overview we have we have here is we have discussed um, uh, right from scratch I would say because this uh, 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 this lecture I wanted to be standing alone. So I started with the um, very fundamental of ANN and then uh, we saw the relationship uh, AI, AML and DL should be clear now and uh, systems approach we have used um, uh, here uh, because we chose one component but we knew how that one component come from a uh, uh, from the plant and then modeling for ANN and RUL with uncertainty estimates.